welcome. Uh, really glad that you are joining us uh, today online. Uh, whether it's with Facebook or on our YouTube page or through Rogers Cable TV, we're glad that we're able to connect with you in this way. Uh, if it's your first time, my name is Joel and I am uh, the pastor here at Paris Community uh, Church. Now, as we get closer and closer to summer, uh, I'm sure many of us have different plans, different things that are going on. And we have a number of different outreach events, ways for us to connect with people in our community. And if you're in the Paris area and you'd like to hear more about some of the ways that we can connect, whether it's through an ice cream truck or whether it's through backyard bonfires or through block parties, we would love to get that information to you. The best way to find out is to sign up for our e-blast. That comes out once a week, lets you know the things that are happening in the church, things that are coming up, just giving you um, constant updates. And so if you jump onto our website, click on the button, you'll sign up in about 20 seconds and we'll be able to connect with you to share some of the other ways beyond online that we can be connecting with one another. Well, this summer we're also doing a bit of a gift card giveaway. And I realize that in the summertime, people travel, people are in different places. And so this is what I'm asking of you. If you are watching online, simply take a picture of where you're watching, send me an email and let me know the location of where you're watching online. And then every month, we're gonna enter all the people's names into a draw and someone, someone is gonna walk away with a, a great gift card um, of your choosing. We've already had a few entries come in, as you'll see from the photos. Uh, someone watching from their boat in a marina in Sturgeon Bay, uh, and then people checking us out in Collingwood. And so even if it's in your own house, if it's in your backyard, if it's, if it's out in a park, whatever it is, get creative, send us a picture. We, we just love to share these pictures with others because we realize that we have an online community. And this is perhaps one of the ways that we can connect with you. So take a picture, send me an email, would love to connect with you and hopefully give you a gift card this coming uh, summer. Well, we're jumping into week three in our series, Unfiltered Faith. And we're dealing with a question that I often get asked. And that's simply this, why does God allow suffering? Not just simply in the world, but hardships in the midst of our own life. And so we're going to jump into that. And I just hope that this time together is encouraging to you and enables you to encounter God where you need to hear from him most. Please know that if there's ever anything that we can do, if there's something we can be praying for or if you have a request, please never hesitate to send me an email. We'd love to connect with you and, and, and just continue to see how we can connect with one another. Well, great that you're with us. Hope you have a great rest of the day. And I hope this time together is helpful and meaningful for you wherever you are at. Oh, the perfect son of God in all his innocence and walking in the dirt with you acquainted with our grief a man of sorrow son of suffering blood and tears how can it be there's a God who weeps and there's a God who bleeds oh praise the one who would reach for Distant and removed, but you chased us down in merciful pursuit. To the sinner, you were grace, and the broken, you embraced. And in the end, the proof is in your wounds. Yes, in the end.
stripes, my healing, oh praise King Jesus, to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, and your love is still reaching, oh praise King Jesus, glory to God forever, your cross, my freedom, and your stripes, my healing, oh praise King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood is still speaking, your love is still reaching, oh praise King Jesus, glory to God Why does God allow suffering in this world? I don't know if that's a question that you have wrestled with or you have struggled with, but this is the question that I think oftentimes becomes a bit of a breaking point for people when it comes to faith, when it comes to belief in God. Uh, welcome. Uh, today we're jumping into week three of our series called Unfiltered Faith, looking at the relevancy of Jesus in the midst of all of life. And, and today I want to look at the issue of suffering. Because we, we look around in the world and we see poverty, we see disease, we see wars, we see brokenness. And, and we can wonder, God, why, like, why do you allow this to happen? But as we get a little bit personal, perhaps we see it in our own lives where there has been diagnosis of sickness, of, of, of cancer. We, we, we see loved ones who tragically die. We see brokenness within families. We, we, we see struggles and difficulties. And this is when it becomes personal. We begin to, to wonder, God, why, why do you allow this to happen? As a, as a church, we, we talk about how God is for us. Us, how, how God is loving and how God is in control. But when you look at suffering, when you look at difficulties, when you, when you look at the pain in this world, oftentimes it's this question that has the power to either draw us closer to God or to begin to push us away. The reality of suffering as you start to go all the way back, you begin to see that it is the outcome of the brokenness of this world. That, that because of, of sin, we, we recognize that there are sometimes difficult and horrible consequences for the choices that people make. Now, I understand from like an intellectual level, like we can kind of wrap our mind around that and, and recognize that. But there's also times in life when we see that, well, why is this happening? Like, why are, are innocent people, why are, are good people struggling in the midst of life? God, why, like, why do you allow this to happen? But then you seem to almost hear the silence of God. This is often the question that is repeatedly asked even throughout the Bible. That in the midst of hardships, in the midst of difficulties, that, that people are crying out to God and asking, Why? And it seems as if God is silent. 
that there almost is no response. And, and one of the dangers, one of the concerns around the silence of God when it comes to suffering is we begin to believe the wrong things. We, we begin to wonder, God, do you even care? We start to ask the question, God, are you even there? And so how do we respond? Today, I, when we look at the question of suffering, I, I want us to step a little bit out of the question of the why and, and begin to look more to the reality of the how. Because here's the deal, regardless of what you believe about God, regardless of where you land when it comes to faith, suffering is a part of life. And so how is it that we respond? How is it that we begin to get through. And in many ways, when, when people come to me and they're, they're facing difficulties and they're suffering and they ask that question of why, I, 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 I don't try to give them cliche answers or, or glib responses. I, I often land with where God lands in being silent and quiet and trying to direct them to how do we respond in the midst of it? How will my faith in Jesus make a difference? How, how is Jesus relevant in the midst of suffering? And so what I want to do is, is turn to two specific teachings of Jesus where, where he actually hits on the, the, the reality of suffering. But, but you'll notice he doesn't explain the why. He goes to something, I believe, deeper and even more significant. Because when I think about my own life, if, if I were to have the question of why suffering, why this in the midst of life, it, it doesn't take me out of the hardship. It doesn't take me out of the hurt. It, it, it doesn't necessarily take any of it away. And so I want to look at the how. How is Jesus relevant in the midst of my suffering? And so I want to turn to two teachings of Jesus found in the Gospel of Matthew found often referred to in the place of the Sermon on the Mount, one of the most succinct teachings of Jesus. And it's here that, that Jesus makes some statements that, that at first may not seem helpful, but as you start to dig into it, you realize how helpful and hopeful they truly are. The first place I want to turn to is in Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 4. And it lands in a section of what is referred to as the Beatitudes. And it's here that Jesus speaks about what is the reality of a blessed life. Blessed sometimes is a, a too churchy of a word. It can also be translated, what is the reality of a happy life? And Jesus begins to, to list a bunch of characteristics as to, as to what brings happiness, what, what brings blessing into the midst of life. And as you read through them, you'll start to realize that they kind of cut against what culture may say. Let me read one as it relates to suffering. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, this is what Jesus says. You are blessed, you are happy if you mourn. It's like, what, wait, 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 wait a second, what, what, Jesus is like, I, I, I think I might have read that wrong, maybe you thought you heard me wrong, no, Jesus is saying, blessed are those who mourn, and like, my initial response to this, maybe yours is like, listen, I think you got it the wrong way, like, I think I'd be more blessed, I'd be more happy if I hadn't to go through the circumstances that caused me to mourn, that, that actually a blessed life is, is avoiding the difficulties, avoiding the suffering, avoiding the hurt, avoiding the hardship. It's like, Jesus, you've, you've, you've kind of lost me. Like, blessed are those who mourn. But Jesus continues. He says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. It's like, okay, I, I get it. I see the cause and effect. Like, I'm mourning, and so I'm comforted. But, but how is that helpful? How, how is that hopeful in the midst of life? What we begin to see, not only in the pages of Scripture, but, but those who put their faith in Jesus, you begin to realize that it's oftentimes in the most difficult places of life that we feel the greatest presence of God being with us. That, that to truly appreciate God's love and comfort and care, it's it's not when life is seemingly going swimmingly, but it's in the hard places, in the difficult places. 
The book of Psalms is found in the middle of the Bible, but it's essentially people's personal and then corporate prayers to God that it touches on on a range of situations and circumstances. And there's one particular Psalm, Psalm 34, where, where David is, is offering a prayer to God and he's in the midst of a difficult place. He is being hunted down by his enemies and he has to almost act as if he is, he is mentally gone out of his mind so that he will be protected. Like, like imagine how difficult it must be. Imagine the hardship that you have to act like you're mentally out of your mind in order to receive protection. That's how difficult it was for David. But listen to what he says in verse 18. It says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn, for you will be comforted. It was in David's greatest moments of distress that he experienced the very presence and comfort of God. Or you, or you jump into the New Testament and you land on the Apostle Paul, one of the, one of the great leaders of the early church, but a man who, because of his faith in Jesus, faced incredible hardships and difficulties. I mean, the, his story tells us that he was shipwrecked, that he was imprisoned, that he was beaten. There was times he went without clothing and food and water. Like, like if anyone knew suffering and hardships, it was this guy, Paul. And then at, near the end of his life, while well, he is sitting in a cell, a prison cell, reflecting upon life, offering joy and encouragement to others. This is a place he lands when speaking to a group of Christians in Philippi. He talks about a peace that passes all understanding that will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. A peace that passes understanding. You see, oftentimes when we think of peace, we think of a peace that is attached to circumstances. That when life is going well, when we don't have suffering, when we don't face hardships, then we'll experience peace. But Paul is like, no, 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 no. Actually, it's something different. That it's in the midst of your hardships. It's in the midst of your difficulties. It's in the, it's in the eye of the storm that you'll often experience the greatest sense of peace. Is it starting to make more sense? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I believe the greatest comfort we receive is in the place of hardships when we know that God is for us, that Jesus is with us. It's why in the midst of my own suffering and my own difficulties, or when walking with others in the midst of theirs, that I don't try to explain the why, but the how, and to begin to point them to Jesus. I mean, have you ever wondered why the cross? Why, why, why the symbol of following Jesus is, is a symbol of death and suffering and hardship and hurt? Because it shows us the extent that Jesus has gone for us. It, it speaks to the reality that no matter what we face in the midst of life, suffering, even in death, our suffering will not have the final say, that we have victory in Jesus. In the midst of suffering, there are times when God will not answer the why. But because of the cross, we can be confident that it's not because God does not love us. It's not because God does not care for us. It's not because God has distanced himself from us, that God is for us, that Jesus is with us. And oftentimes we experience the greatest level of peace and comfort in the midst of the storm. I've recently been reminded of this through two individuals within our church. Two guys that I have gotten to know over the course of the last number of months and years, both diagnosed with severe cancer, both living in a reality that this was not what they wanted, this is not what they expected, but in watching them express faith in Jesus, it has been truly amazing. A couple of weeks ago, one of them, Dylan, who's recently begun coming to our church, was diagnosed with stage four cancer back in November. And it pushed him to a place of anger and frustration and, and difficulty, but it brought him back to faith. 
I had the chance to interview him and, and fortunately someone in our congregation captured it on their cell phone and so we've posted it on Facebook and so I would encourage you to go and see that because you see in the story of Dylan of how even in the eye of the storm, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of chemo, in the midst of, of the uncertainty of life, he has found comfort. He has lived these words, blessed are those who mourn for you will be comforted. Or I think of, of Gary, who I've known for a number of years and, and four years ago was diagnosed with severe brain cancer, who has gone through surgeries, who has gone through chemo, is now currently in a hospital in London. We spoke just the other day, yet he abounds with hope. He, he speaks of, 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 of how his faith has never been stronger. I mean, here's a, here's a picture of, of Gary, and you'll notice all these cards. There's, there's over 53 cards that have been sent to Gary from the people in our church, just, just reminding him that, that they are with him, that they are praying for him. And I spoke to Gary this week, and Gary's like, I can't wait to get better and get stronger, to come back to church, to thank everyone, and to tell them again just how good God is. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted when we step with Jesus in the midst of it all. Jesus concludes the, the Sermon on the Mount with these words that I believe gives an incredible helpful image for us as to how we can experience this promise of Jesus that we too will be comforted even in the midst of the suffering we face. Let me read these words of Jesus, Matthew 7 beginning in verse 24. It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. I believe it's here in this teaching that Jesus is again speaking the reality of suffering, that, that the storms of life will come. And similarly to, to the physical storms of life, we, we can't control them. They, they, they are beyond us. They, they're, they're an external thing that has an impact upon us. The same too was suffering. Oftentimes we can't control it. Oftentimes it's, it's nothing that we have done, but we face them in the midst of life. And, and Jesus is saying, it's not the question of if you'll go through the storms, but rather how will you get through them? You see, here's the thing. Regardless of what you believe about God, we will still face the storms of life. And so how is it that you will get through them? How will you sustain them? The question that Jesus asks is, what is your foundation? That when we put our faith in Jesus, although the storms may come and they may cause damage, when our faith is in Jesus, it won't bring ultimate devastation. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Or the words of David, God is close to the brokenhearted. Or the words of the Apostle Paul, a peace that passes all understanding, lands at the place of the incredible promise of Jesus being with us. Suffering is a part of life. And oftentimes we don't know why but we can know how, how we can sustain the sufferings, how we do not allow the sufferings to bring ultimate devastation in life or even in death. Because, because of Jesus. And so build your life on him. Allow the sufferings to draw you closer, not push you away. So that these words of Jesus is not just something we say, 
but a reality that we live. Blessed are those who mourn. Why? For you will be comforted. My prayer for you is in the midst of whatever you are facing, that you will know the comfort of God. Don't walk through the storms of life alone. Turn to Jesus. Lean upon others. If, if there's a way that, that I or the church can support you, can encourage you, please reach out. We, we don't want you to go through the storms of life alone. It's why over 53 cards were sent to Gary so that he knows that while he's sitting in a hospital bed awaiting strength and potential treatment, that God is with him, that we are with him, that Jesus is for him, and he has found comfort. That same gift is available to you. Will you join me as I pray? And so, Lord God, I just, I pray for those that are watching here today. For those particularly that are going through the storm of life, maybe completely undeserved, unexpected. God, I pray that these words would be a reality for them. That they would know your blessing through your comfort in the midst of their difficulties. May your peace be upon them. May your peace guard their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. For it's in Jesus' name we ask and we pray. Amen. And so now may the blessing of God the Father, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace, the peace that passes understanding of the Holy Spirit be with you today and in all your storms of life. Amen.